folks. Fuck. We're on our way down to the crap. So we're heading out to, to Terminal City Riders Solstice Ride at Crab Park tonight. A group of social bike riders that I got involved with just before the pandemic hit. I generally ride with the Terminal City Riders mostly because they uh, keep the joy within cycling. I used to uh, do the Critical Mass event a couple of years back, but unfortunately the Critical Mass event got a little too political. And that's why I like this group. It's a community of like-minded urban explorers. They're all coming together for the joy of the ride. And tankers who express themselves through the rides they build. I did record this full ride when they did it two years ago, before the pandemic. I posted it to my Vicious Cycle Series YouTube sub-channel. But this year I wanted to do something a bit different. I want to set up a hyperlapse this time. This, mounted to my bicycle, is my GoPro Hero 7. I think it's going to be up to 11 by the time this video comes out. I think the ultra smooth they introduced in 7 was a game changer, and the horizon lock on the new 10s would have been useful for this project, but 600 bucks is a little much to pay for a new camera, when I can just do a 2% degree rotation in Adobe Premiere. To set up this hyperlapse, I turn it on, swipe over to the time lapse, choose time warp, and verify my settings are correct. I'm only doing 15 times speed, as I think you lose a lot of the background detail in some of the landscape if you go at full blown at uh, 30 times. So 15 it is. If I set it up right, here's how the hyperlapse will look. I guess you notice this isn't hyperlapse. This is what happens when you run out of batteries and the camera resets itself, and you don't notice because the sun is too bright on that LCD. Let this be a lesson, folks. Don't buy cheap batteries from Wish. Here, we see a herd of Pacific Northwest Canadian cyclists. They gather in these large herds, wearing outlandish plumage, to confuse and distract predators and evade police officers looking to confiscate their booze. Soon, this herd will move on. In the grassy hills of Anya Park, under the shadow of the Gate of the Northwest Passage art installation, we hear the distinct mating call of the mounted Bluetooth speaker.
Its distinctly crackly distorted song is a natural defense mechanism, which can bring a copyright strike to any YouTube channel that tries to record it. Here is some smooth jazz instead. At the new location, I set up for the time-lapse capture again. I had already taken the same shot last time, so this time I switched it up to get the sunset behind the trees so I could focus on the dance and the play of the clouds in the sky. Even though the R6 has an intervalometer built in, I still like using an external one and holding one in your hands so that you can monitor it distinctly. I just like having one in my hand. Given I was capturing a sunset in slow moving clouds, I set the intervalometer to 4 seconds. The reason I'm doing it this way, uh, I've, got, uh, I've got a sunset before, sunsetting behind the trees, but I really wanted to show some of the play, interplay in the wispy clouds, the way the clouds dance in the sky at sunset. So I really wanted to get that uh, double effect of uh, the two uh, uh, cloud banks of going crisscross over each other and dancing and in intersecting up in this area right here, up in that area right there, I really wanted the clouds intersecting and dancing and what have you, so that's uh, the purpose of this shot. As you see, I'm doing it at, uh, at uh, really a high frame rate because it is the middle of daylight and at F5 for, uh, for focus and ISO 800 to keep the game down, so, and as you see, the, the battery indicator says it's almost dead, so I better get another battery ready. And this is how that looked. The sun has set and we are in a blue hour, nearing our final stop. Arriving at the beach of the final stop, one last time lapse. Figured I would use my trusty steed as the subject to silhouette off the last of the dying light. <laughs> 